You just have to choose. You can have anything you want, but not everything. And that's where people get all frustrated because they go, well, what, what about this or that? I'm like, sometimes it is this or that. It's not all of that. Welcome, welcome. It's Girl Khan here, your money mindset expert. And today we get to speak to Damon Lupo, an amazing entrepreneur, an amazing individual. And we get to listen to him through his words, how amazing his journey has been and what he's overcome to get to where he is at the moment. So welcome, welcome, Damien. Hey, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. It's a, such a pleasure to have you, my day. It's an absolute pleasure. So Damien, tell us what you do and uh, you know your background. So what I do every day is break people's financial shackles, all these shackles that people have on themselves. And they, they're, they're basically the frustrations around money and not being free and, f- and being stressed. Those are shackles. And so the, the thing I do every day with my different companies is to break the shackles in different forms. A lot of it has to do with retirement because we, there's a general concern amongst most of the Western civilization that we're not going to have enough money when we retire. And it's really about shifting your thinking, shifting your tools and shifting your actions to get away from that and break those shackles. And so I, that's what I, I spend all my time doing. And it's it's not something I woke up one day and said, ah, this is the perfect thing. It was just sort of an evolution over 20 years. And it, everything led to this, including starting 50 plus companies and having a pretty big real estate investment portfolio and then losing it. So that's kind of part of the journey. And the amazing story or the painful story kind of different, depends on the perspective, I guess. <laughs> fabulous, fabulous. So you, Damien, actually deal with the opposite and this is why i'm so excited to have you on the podcast you deal with the man as i call it the man-made laws of money and how to invest what to do and the strategies behind it right is that right yeah the man-made laws i mean this is true there's also some interesting laws around uh, and I, these are almost spiritual laws in a way when you think about money some of this stuff and it's not to be woo but like you can't you, you can't abdicate responsibility you can't push your money to somebody and say i'm going to hand it over and not care about it it's I always say it's kind of the same thing as people that say, well, I want to have my money working for me and I'm not going to think about it. It's going to be very passive. And I go, that's cool. That's like having passive sex. How long is your partner going to hang out with you? (laughs) Probably not very long. And that's how the money works too. If you're just totally passive and you're not thinking about it, it doesn't mean you need to go work. Your money needs to work. But if you're not engaged, like we all probably had that experience, unfortunately, where you're like, seriously, what's wrong with you? Why aren't you engaged? Where are you? Like, where's your head? And, And that's kind of how it is with money. And a lot of people get into trouble because they hand their money to somebody, they abdicate responsibility, and then they hope. They smoke a bunch of hopium, and that's the strategy. <laughs> and that is a very bad strategy because it doesn't work. I agree, I agree. And I love what you said because there, you, you touched upon slightly on spiritualism, money, and that is my area of expertise. That's what I actually talk about mostly in my teachings and my trainings, which is the spiritualism money because I leave the man-made laws and all the strategies and all the, all the other fun stuff to experts like yourselves. So, and start with your journey. And I, I heard from the introduction, you had uh, 50 plus com- uh, companies before you got to this point. And I, I love what you said that you, it was a journey to get to where you are. It, this is not something you decide to be one day. It, it, everything that happened in your life led you to here. So tell us more about that. So what led you to this journey and to be on this path where you are right now? Well, my left foot, my right foot. I mean, that's that's one of the missing elements for most people is they they don't take action. They just sit there and they, they've watched The Secret too many times and they go, oh, God is going to send me a bag of money and he's going to yeah. drop it from the and sky. That, and yeah. that does not work. You have to go do something. It's you know, it's akin to the, the story about somebody that's, that has a flood coming and they decide they're going to stay there and wait for, for the sign or, the, or to be saved. And when they end up get drowning after s- several um, helpers came along, God said, what is wrong? And they said, well, I was waiting. And they said, I sent three people, but you've got to do something. Yeah. And that's the that's the bottom line with money. And part of it is it's not an overnight thing. There is no, you're going to get rich, you're going to get free in 30 minutes or 30 days or three months or a year. It takes time. But does it take 25 years? No, it's it's probably a five-year process for yeah. most people if they're seriously committed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So when you said you, you know, in your intro that you lost your real estate, what happened with that? And when? how long ago was that? So I lost my real estate back in 2008. A lot of people lost their stuff. I had, at that time, I had built up a $20 million uh, portfolio. So convert that, it's a big number, whether it's 20 million or 20,000, when it's all you have and then you take that further. So I was negative 5 million. That that happened because of my ego. It didn't happen because of the meltdown. It, it happened because of my lack of, of experience. At that time I had hair. So what I say is if you're bald or gray, it shows wisdom sometimes. And <laughs> You know, I went through that and the hair went away and I had a whole, whole bunch of scar tissue. That 
it, if, if I were to say, like I used to say in the beginning, right after it happened, oh, it was the economy, it was bad partners, it was the politicians. Mm -hmm. The problem is that's that's being a victim. And yeah. the biggest shift for anybody to become wealthy and free is to own everything, 100%. Doesn't matter if you've had a bad divorce, bad spouse, bad partners, bad kids, mm -hmm. bad economy, bad president, it doesn't make any difference. Whatever those things are, you can't control them. What you can control is your level of responsibility. And when you do that, you can change it. And that's that was the big shift. So losing 20 million sounds terrible, except it was an amazingly powerful lesson. And it allowed me to say, okay, let's bundle up those lessons and shift and pivot and own everything about my life. And it really changed how I started stepping left and right. Yes, and I absolutely agree with 100% of everything you just said. It is taking personal responsibility for how you respond to everything that's happening around you. You don't control other people's reactions. You sometimes you know, can, you have no control of what was happening in the economy. What you do control is your response to it, right? That's, that's it. It's your response and then it, it, it's how you interpret it and what you do with it. So. You know, people like sometimes people say, well, it was a hurricane or a typhoon and it, it hit me or somebody died. And how can I take responsibility for that? Well, you decide how you're going to react to it Absolutely. and whether you're going to do anything. And and that's that's what empowers us. And it's this isn't woo. This isn't like, OK, I have to figure out the mystical magic. This is just you simply saying, OK, nobody's at fault. This is literally just my choice on how I'm going to interact with it. Right. Brilliant. Now, that is. And I totally agree, and that's the kind of thing that I would advocate. But someone listening to this would say, "Okay, Damien, how did you change your mindset? How did you, you know, how did you flip the coin? How did you start seeing that adversity as an opportunity? How did you come out from there super strong and achieve everything you have there, you know, from there afterwards?" So, walk us through that the mindset process that you went through during this time. It's interesting when you say the, the, the word strong, because to be strong, you have to be willing to be vulnerable and be open to real, what is true. And that was the question I spent two years asking with a coach therapist. It was literally every week asking what is true. And for most of us, if we are willing to do that work, it's the hardest work we'll ever do. It's harder than digging a ditch. It's harder than going to college at, or uni. It's like, it's brutal. When you ask that question, what is true? And you say, okay, what is true about me and peel back the layers? That was the process. And and for all of us, there are pieces that we don't want to admit or we don't want to look at. N number one is we tend to not want to look at our numbers, our finances, because when we look at our numbers, our credit cards, our bank statements, and our calendar, the three C's, calendar, credit, and, cal and, uh, and cash, all of a sudden they tell a story. And usually it's not a very pretty story if we're still shackled. <laughs> it shows our decisions, which are yeah. driven by our behaviors, which are driven by our values. And so we go, oh my gosh, I must value I must value ice cream more than I do my financial security because I have a $2,000 line item in my budget that I'm spending on it. So that's that's where we really have to be honest. And like for me, I spent a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of energy proving to other people because there's a the six human needs that Tony Robbins talks about, I talked about in Reinvented Life. One of them is significance. And this is where, where you're proving something to somebody else and we all have it, it's part of our ego. If it takes over, you're really just living for other people that really aren't paying attention to you, even though you think they are because they're on your Facebook feed, but they're really not. Mm. I mean, I, I totally get that. I mean, and I understand that, that the need to prove to things to other people, but about, but how do you deal with, you know, not just the therapist, but just with your, with your own self, when you come, when you're going through that diversity, when you've lost a big portfolio, how do you walk through, how do you tell yourself, okay, I'm going to see this um, as an opportunity for me to change my life, for me to work on something else and what lessons have I learned? Because there were plenty of lessons there, but how do you get to that point and how do you carry on going? Because obviously when, as soon as you start, you're not going to see, start seeing the results. The results come later. Um, and they sort of lag behind. How do you get to that point? How do you carry on going when internally you have a vision and you're following it, but externally everything's falling apart? So the first thing is acknowledging the truth. And the second thing is saying, okay, do I want to have a repeat? Do I want to have deja vu or Groundhog Day over again? And so, I mean, I, I acknowledged what was true. Here's what happened. I acknowledged that my self-worth and my net worth were the same thing, that my balance sheet was me, like I was a walking, talking balance sheet. And then I said, do I want something different? And the answer is yes. So then we have to choose. And once we choose, we have to do. So you can choose all you want, but if you don't do anything about it, you're just gonna be on a merry-go-round. Like the same thing. It's look, hey, look, my life is the same this week as it was last week. So it's really just taking steps. And sometimes one of the things that we tend to do is we say, okay, I'm going to improve my life by 10%. Mm. Well, all you're doing is taking the, the past and continuing to tweak it. It never really has an exponential growth. One of the, the strategies that I've used is to say, okay, financially, for example, 
whatever I made in 2019 or last year, okay, let me take that number and add a zero to it. And the reason I add a zero is because you can't use your past and just nudge it to, to go 10x. It doesn't work. You have to fundamentally rewire and look at other things, other people leveraging different things. And so I had to change everything. It, basically, I had to get naked with myself, my thinking and what I was doing and say, okay, if I'm doing the same thing, I'm going to have really similar results. Mm -hmm. And so I had to really assess that. And it took one of the things was I had to say, okay, I need I need help because I'm not smart enough to even know what the questions are. And that's where you have other people that are baller and grayer that they can say, hey, here's the question. It's worth it's worth finding somebody that has true wisdom, decades of wisdom and experience yeah. to and ask them and, and really truly pay them because we tend to pay attention to what we pay for. And exactly. so if you pay somebody, it's it's interesting. I was talking to to somebody this past week and I said, I would love to write a check for $5,000 to talk to somebody for a half an hour that's spent the last 10 or 20 years doing what I'm about to do mm -hmm. because I shortcut 10 or 20 years. And people say, that's a lot of money. And I'm like, do you know how much it costs to spend five or 10 years figuring something out that somebody could tell you in a half an hour? It's priceless. Exactly. Oh, I, I love that. I love that. I love that. I think one of the things, and you know, as a, as a money person myself, one of the things that I value the most is time because money you can make, but time you can't go back. And time is precious. Absolutely. And I, I completely agree with that. And I think this idea that we should pay mentors comes, I, I, you know, I learned early on from Tony Robbins, actually, myself, way back when I picked a book ages ago, and ha has been a philosophy in my life, because I've always gone to mentors. And I've realized that as I have, I've come through the other end as a stronger, as as more defined a person. And that's, that's what made me who I am right now. And I've personally probably invested over 100,000 in my own personal development, more in my personal development than in my education, to be honest. So coming back to you now, how would you, know, when somebody comes to you and says, okay, um, you know, and this is very common for me to find that I find there's people who are who are middle class or even upper middle class, and they, they are earning high, they're high income earners, be it doctors, lawyers, and so forth. And being a lawyer myself, I, I come across a lot of professionals, even accountants. And accountants are a really funny thing. They they are so brilliant at working at dealing with other people's money, but when it comes to me, they're actually all over the place. So how would you support someone like this? You know, someone who is a high earner, for example, a six-figure earner, how would you talk them through? What would you do with them? You know, and how would you guide them? Well, the reason that that happens is because when it's your own money, it's an emotional experience. Okay. When it's exactly. somebody else's money, it's a spreadsheet. Yes. And so there's, it's why people that are brilliant, like doctors are some of the worst investors and they're terrible with their money because they, there's a disconnect. For one, a lot of times people are super smart and they think they, well, if I'm super smart with my career, then naturally I'm smart with my money and they yeah. won't ask for help. Exactly. They won't ask for somebody to, they, they won't go to somebody and be vulnerable and say, I literally have no idea what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So where do I start? And, that, and that's, I mean, that's the, the biggest shift. And then a lot of times I see people squirrel brained where they're, they're like drunk squirrels chasing nuts and they're all over the place. And the first step is narrowing the focus. It's saying, okay, what are we actually talking about here? Usually going to the pain, the point of power is like, that that is the that is the power it's the point of it's being in the present in the moment on that one thing and people tend to be all over the place and so you're like there's no power it's all diffused it's like a laser versus a scattered flashlight one burns through and one's just kind of dim so you really have to say okay what am i going to focus on and usually it takes somebody else that will knock some sense into you and it, I, I have this happen all the time people call and and they start talking and i'll let them talk and then a few minutes in i say stop 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 i'll interrupt them just stop like, what are we actually talking about? And they start talking and I say, I have to stop them because most people are so used to being inside their story. They're yeah. not willing to tell the truth about that one thing because they're trying to avoid the one thing the entire time. Yes, of course, of course. Initially, you talk them through and they find out what the, what the main issue is. And then would you go do financial planning with them and how do you help them? Well, usually the first thing for anybody really is to get, tr get, get honest about what's real today. Like, where are we at? Because people, it's like they say, okay, I want to go to Italy. It's like, great, which direction are you going? They're like, well, I'm going towards Italy. Yeah, okay, where are you? I'm not really sure. Well, how are you going to know which direction? Are you going east, west, up or down? Like, are you on the sun or are you in the middle of the earth? Like, which direction? And so when we, the, the, the point of that is we have to know where we are financially. If we have a goal, people say, I want to make $10 million. And I go, why? They go, well, then I'll be free. And I go, where are you at now? I'm like, oh, I got $6 million. I'm like, you're not free? And but the point is, if you dig in, sometimes we're actually an inch away from where we want to be. We just don't even realize it because we haven't spent the time. And it's way more fun to go create. It's sometimes it's it's like painful 
to go and look at spreadsheets, to go do bookkeeping, to all that really exciting stuff that everybody's like, oh, that sounds terrible. Mm -hmm. That's the stuff that you have to start with. So what do we do first? We figure out where we're at. Once we figure out where we're at, we know how far away we are, what's required. We can start filling in the gap. But how do you know what the gap is if you don't even know where you are? That's the first thing that anybody has to do. And it's a thing people mostly avoid. I completely agree. So I always say this, if you if you get in the cab and say you want to go towards, um, you want to go to the airport, the cab has to know where to come to. You know, it needs to your current address so it can take you to the airport, right? Once we've figured out where we are, so for example, say for example, I sit down with you and say, okay, you know, Damien, this is, this is my current income, this is my current expenditure, and this is where my target is between three to five years. What would be, once we worked out where we are, so what, I mean, assuming, you know, you know your current address, how would you give directions to the cab driver then? So there's, there's two more things that are going to happen that are pretty fast. One is the question is, where do you want to go? And so you say, okay, well, I'm here and I want to go there. Great. So there's a certain influence of people and environmental factors that are in your life today. And the first thing you have to do is what am I going to purge? What am I going to cut out? Because if you're not willing to cut out the people and the stuff that's around you, that's draining you or taking you down the path that you don't want to go, well, you're going to go there. And, yeah. so that, and that's the hardest thing. People go, well, I love my family. I'm like, I still love your family. Just don't spend 12 hours a day with them. You know, like start cutting out time. And I, this is consistent. You are going to become that stuff around you. It's osmosis. It's what yeah. happens. You just absorb it. The energy, the thinking, the values, the integrity, everything. If you take all those people and you just average them, it doesn't matter if you average their income, you average their health, you average their level of abundance. It, you are the average of all this stuff because we tend to do that naturally. It's it, without thinking, it's just an automatic tribal effect. Absolutely. And that's something that I definitely, definitely agree with. Not only that, as you start developing, as you start growing, you naturally have, I mean, I always talk from energetic terms, you're, at, you're not in alignment with, energetically with those people anymore. And therefore, when you are in that environment, you actually feel uncomfortable, you feel you know uneasy and, and vice versa, they feel uneasy with you too. And the natural process would happen. You don't actually have to cut them out, I think, intentionally. Naturally, you just start gravitating away from them. If you're on a different path, if you're on a path that's in alignment with your true self, with your, you know, with your higher self. And so I love that idea that you have to be mentally prepared to do that. Because a lot of time when you do become distant from certain people, especially when they're family members, it comes a bit of a shock. Like, really? <laughs> I can't be with family anymore. Or friends I've grown up with since I was a child. So that's, that's an important factor. Now, what do, you say, what do you say to somebody who says, well, you know, Damien, you know, I, I understand what you're saying and I agree with all of this, um, you know, consciously, but my heart doesn't believe that, you know, I don't want to, you know, I don't want money if it means I can't be with my friends that I've grown up with since kids, you know, as children. I don't want money if it means I'm going to be pulling away from my family. How would you respond to someone like that? It's your choice. I mean, if you want the life that you've you've had already and you want to continue hanging around with the same people and they're, it's, the thing is you're going to end up having a life based on the least common denominator. So it doesn't mean anybody's a bad person, but if somebody's thinking, hey, I'm, I'm good with watching football on, on the weekends and drinking beer and that's my life and you have these dreams of whatever that's not that, you just have to choose. You can have anything you want, but not everything. And that's where people get all frustrated because they go, well, what, what about this or that? I'm like, sometimes it is this or that. It's not all of that. And so there's, there is a choice and you just have to grow up. I mean, sometimes it's like, well, I want everything. Okay, well, what are you, seven years old? Like the bottom line is if you're going to be an adult, you have to act like one and there are choices. You don't get to have everything. It's not, it's not part of the human experience, but we tend to complain about it and we feel like we're entitled to it. You're not entitled to a damn thing. You are literally entitled to what you do, what you create, what you work for. What you, yeah, it, and unfortunately, there's a lot of energy and effort towards entitlement these days, yeah. especially in 2020. And it's it's really sad because there's no power and there's no joy in, in, in things being given to you. Look at lottery winners or people that inherit a bunch of money. Are they happier for about a minute? Mm. And then their their lives are their lives are actually worse. So it's the same thing. What, what you need to do is fall in love with whatever process you're going to go on, whatever journey you're going to go on. Fall in love with that thing, not the outcome. The outcome is a split second. That doesn't really matter that much. In fact, it's probably different from what you're doing. It's different from what you think. The, the question is, can you get into the thing that is your life? And if you can, then you've got a fighting chance of actually having a life by design that, that's, that's joyous and harmonious versus a conflict the entire rest of your life. I love that. I love what you said. I'm like, you should use it. You can have everything, but you can't. You can have anything you want, but you can't have everything. I absolutely agree with that. You need to choose what it is that you actually really, really want. And you have to sacrifice 
the lower thing for the for the better or the higher thing. I always say, you know, you have to sacrifice the lower energetic thing, whatever it may be, maybe football, beer, or whatever have you, for the high energetic thing, which is maybe the business of your dreams, the kind of lifestyle, the kind of health, and the kind of home that you want. And especially for me, I'm I'm a, I'm a cars girl, so I I don't really fancy jewelry or anything. I'm not like that, but I do like cars. My motivation is the Tesla and the Bentley, and that's what. I mean, that's otherwise I'm quite happy doing whatever I'm doing without it. But if there's one thing that I personally would want, it's the Bentley. Well, then that, that's my joy. I'd rather have the Bentley rather than the binging on the Netflix. See, sacrificing one for the other. And I really, uh, you know, that's what that's something that I sort of talk about a lot. All right. Okay. So thank you so much for your insights, your advice, your invaluable advice, Damien. What would be the one parting advice you'd give to someone who's thinking, Damien, I don't know where I'm going to start or, you know, what do I do or what do I think about it? what you said made so much sense to me. But where do I start right now by myself? The the one thing that you talked about that made it just makes me smile is you know I want a Bentley and and people have dreams they have things that they want that there's an exchange of money and one of the greatest gifts you can give yourself is learning how to create or buy assets that will buy your toys mm -hmm. and if you do that you can you're on the, the the road to freedom if you're always trading your time for your toys then your life is going to be a living hell and you're, you're going to be exhausted. You have to learn how to have money being created when you sleep. It's what Warren Buffett said this and it's true. So if you can focus, even if it's on one thing, start off with something that's paying you one or 2% or 5%, find something and then get more sophisticated based on activities. But you got to start, you got to shift. We're not taught to do that. What we're taught to do is go to uni and then get a job, be an accountant, be an attorney, be a, be a, a doctor. And we're always a slave. And that is not how it's meant to be. Financially, financial literacy is about you creating assets that then pay for your life so that you can actually have your time, which as you said, is the most important thing. Brilliant, fantastic. So Damon, where can we find you on the internet? So your links and everything, by the way, we've been listening for this, the links for Damien and, and all his social media um, handles will be on the show notes. But for now, Damon, where can we find you? Best place to find me is Financial Underdogs. It's the podcast and financialunderdogs.com is where I do my best work and share the best of what's real, what's true, not the way we want it to be, but the way it is and how we get to where we want versus just living in delusion, which is kind of what you see on Facebook, unfortunately. So Financial Underdogs is the place to be. Listen to me every Monday. Uh, you can also find more about me on financialunderdogs.com. Thank you so much, Damien. It's been an absolute pleasure and honor to have you. And you've given us so many nuggets of gold, which is un invaluable, totally invaluable. Thank you so much. And for those listening, thank you so much for joining me with the Gold Khan on Money Mindset with Gold Khan. I will be back with another episode and featuring on Friday Future, speaking to another inspirational person, giving you some insights into their life and giving advice on how you can move forward with your money and with your life and with your business. Well, until the next time we meet, this is Gold Khan signing off. Take care and bye for now.